Hello everyone, welcome to the Comic Game Movie Show. My name is Ashana. Today I'm here to give you my thoughts and my review of Star Wars Episode, I believe, 9, The Rise of Skywalker. Now this movie has controversy written all over it. As you, if you recall while watching my channel, I did not like The Last Jedi. And I'm not the biggest Star Wars guy. Like, I am not. Like, I like Star Wars. And honestly, I started to kind of get a little bit more into... The thing that I got more into Star Wars with was not prequels or the original trilogy. It was Clone Wars. I loved Clone Wars, the animated series. I thought it was a great series. Um, I'm probably going to review that in um, the last season that they do that comes on Disney Plus that I believe is coming out somewhere in time in January. So I'm probably going to do a review on that last season. But um, I might I might do a recap of um, Clone Wars. and I might rewatch. Clone Wars, the animated series, and give my thoughts on that because I've never put them on here before. There's a lot. I'm thinking. I'm thinking about reviewing older, th older animated series and older shows and older things that I like but that I haven't put put it put my opinion out there. So I might go back and do Clone Wars. But we're talking about Rise of the of Skywalker. This movie is conflicting. On one hand. It is a fun, epic movie. I, I do think that is a fun movie. I think it's worth seeing in the theaters. I think it's worth going to the movies to see. I think it is a big experience. Outside of Endgame, outside of some of the more Marvel things like Endgame and Civil War and Infinity War, I do think it is probably the second biggest like experience. Like It's an experience. It is definitely a cinematic experience to go see. The CGI, the the CGI is great, and the and the special effects are great, and it, it's just so epic in its scale. It's 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 very large in its scale. It's like if you watch this and watch the Mandalorian, you almost get the flip because the Mandalorian is so small in its scale, but it's so you know, but it's you know, it's got it's got probably better writing and it's probably better well done, but like it's so big in its scale. Um, some of the humor does work. Um, not all of the humor works, but a lot of the humor does for me. Um. While Finn, Ray, and Poe's trio chemistry kind of feels like forced at times, for the most part, it didn't bother me. It bothered the hell out of Seth, but it didn't bother me for the most part. Though the movie does suffer from something that I have heard people talk about, and when I went to see the movie, I kind of can finally tell you, the movie is has a neck break speed. It's two hours and thirty minutes, but it won't. But to the movie's credit, it didn't feel like two hours and thirty. It didn't feel like a long movie because it was moving at such a high clip speed that it, there really wasn't any slow parts. There weren't any boring parts in this movie. There weren't any like parts where nothing was happening. There was a lot of problems, but there's never any parts where nothing's happening. The movie is moving at a breakneck speed. It's two hours and 30 minutes, but I swear to God to you, it's going to feel like you've only been in the movie, movie theater for about an hour and 50. That's how it's going to feel. Like, it's going to feel like you've been in the movie for maybe two hours tops because that 30 minutes just goes like that, man. Like, so to the movie's credit, it does not feel long. Um, so I'm just getting my positives out of the way up top. There's more lightsaber battles. They're cool lightsaber battles. There's a really cool fight with Kylo Ren near the back end. There's some cool fights with Kylo Ren and Rey that are pretty cool. Um, they explain the return. This isn't a spoiler of the Emperor, I think, pretty well. In fact, I, I, although it bothered me in the beginning, the more they get into how the Emperor came back and, his, and how he is, it becomes more abundantly clear to me, like, okay, you know what? I can accept this because of how they're doing it and this explanation I can accept. Um, that is pretty much all the positives I can give it because there are a lot of negatives. I think that it is just, it's at a break, it, it is extremely rushed. It, 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 it doesn't quite know, it's, it's, it's trying to, do, it's, it's unearned in many ways. There is a part near the back end that, that is fantastic, that is in 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 of itself, there's a part with Ray in the back end, and it was great. I thought it was great. I think it was a memorable Star Wars moment, and something that will be remembered. In a, in a, in of itself, it was great, but it was but the things around it, like to me, the, this movie is kind of a shame because, like I said, it's rushed. Some things aren't explained very well. There are things that happen that you just discover now that you feel like you should have discovered a while ago. The chemistry between the, the trio, while I didn't m mind it because, you know, I was just willing to let it go and go on with this ride to have a good time, admittedly, it, it there wasn't a lot of meat on that bone. There are things with mo all the characters that never get explored. 
Um, minor spoiler, the whole thing about Finn being in love with Rey never gets explored. The whole, th they, br they bring something to the forefront about Poe that's interesting, but never truly gets explored as well, and never even really gets into. Um, um, Lando's in it for a short bit, he says some words of wisdom and does one thing, uh, and does one thing. There's no one re like um the end they they can't they kind of get a little fan servicey but I didn't think the fan service was that bad as people were saying it is there are there are logical leaps and there are weird logical leaps there's wasted potential like all in all this movie as a movie on its own it is a fun time at the movie theaters it is worth going to see it's a fun time at the movie theaters it's not a bad it, to me it's not a terrible movie it's not a bad movie it's an okay movie I think. I like it more than like Last Jedi for sure because I didn't. There was no moments in this movie where I was visibly like, okay, I'm fucking done with this movie. Like Last Jedi, fucking, I was just like, this is just fuck. I I I, I can't do this, man. I can't do this. This movie, I think Force Awakens is better than this movie because Force Awakens had a direction, but this movie to me suffers from one major thing, and I'm not gonna blame it all on Last Jedi, but it is sort of on Last Jedi's fault. Is that they had to pick up the slack of Last Jedi because Last Jedi did not move. When you watch this movie, it'll just, if you like, if you hate Last Jedi, it'll just make you like it even less because Last Jedi did this movie no favors. There's so much, so many things that should have happened in Last Jedi to set up things in this movie. This movie would be like, this movie is, um, it's like doing Endgame without Infinity War. And like Last Jedi was supposed to, Last Jedi was supposed to be Infinity War to this movie's Endgame. And it didn't do that. It's like skipping from Civil War right to Endgame. It's like these building blocks weren't placed there to do what they want to do. Like and like and, and I feel kind of bad for JJ Abram. He had to pick up the pieces. He 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 had to establish so many, so many things in this single movie that the only way he could pull it off is to make it three hours long or to have done Last Jedi himself. And, um, the more, and like, you know what, this trilogy is a cautionary tale to me between not having a plan. So for all the people who bitch and moan about the MCU having too much of a plan, this is what happens when you don't have a plan. If you don't have a plan, it will not work out. You, things will be convoluted. Things won't work out the way you want them to work out. You'll be forcing chemistry that hasn't been placed there. And watching the actors, I know it could be there, but they haven't shown it. They haven't let us live with these three actors playing off of each other. They haven't hinted to any of this stuff that Ray's doing. They haven't hinted to the Palpatine stuff until just this movie. And that shouldn't be the case. This... Th this is a trilogy. You have to work together to make a trilogy. And it feels so disjointed. The things that he just outright ignores from Last Jedi, which I don't blame him, but it just hurts and it just hinders the entire experience. Watching all three of these movies in a row is not, it's going to feel like a disjointed mess. It's like, it's like me and Seth came up with this analogy yesterday. It's like if you were going on a big road trip, it's going to be like a two day road trip. And you guys don't really have, and you got, you go on a two day road trip. And you got a couple friends in the car. And you got three directors in the car. You got three friends in the car. And at one point, you're the head you're the head guy driving. It's your car. And at one point, you're going to let another friend take over and start driving so you can get some sleep. And while you're driving on the path that they told that you have a mapped out on the path to go to that's the fastest path to this destination, you give it to Ryan Johnson, and he goes, hey, I got this wild idea. I know a shortcut that can get us there even faster. It's a back road thing. We'll go on an adventure. We'll do this. And it'll be an experience like no other. And he takes this back road path. And you wake up and you realize you guys are two days from the destination you're supposed to have been at a while ago. You guys are late for the destination you're supposed to be at. Now you have to now you have to take back over, find the road again. So you have to take back over, come all the way back, find the road again, and keep going. So not only did you have to drive to find the road again, you had to finish your finish where you were going. After being ribbed off course. That's why I hate The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi completely knocked the trilogy completely off course. And the thing is, I don't care about what it was trying to do. I don't care about all that crap. But it didn't establish anything. It did not have three the three characters together. It did not introduce the idea of whatever they were gonna do. It did not it didn't introduce ideas that were supposed to be carried out in the in the next movie. And either that is Ryan Johnson's fault or that is Kathleen Kennedy's fault for not planning it out and having someone write this out. Okay? There's a reason that Marcus and McFeely wrote wrote Civil War 
War, Civil War, Infinity War, and Endgame so that they can have a consistent thing, through line through their movie so that everything lines up so that it is an organic rhythm to the film. You are making a trilogy. You're not making an individual movie. You're making an individual movie, then yes, you can do whatever the fuck you want. But you have to go, you have to work together to make the pieces fit. And it pissed me off watching this movie because I'm sitting here thinking to myself, this movie should work so much better than it actually is. It should work so much more cohesive than it actually does. I should be able to um, go back and watch one and two and build up this anticipation for this movie. I can, like, you know what I mean? Why is it that Marvel's the only one who knows how to pull this off right now? I can watch it, like, or Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu Panda pulled off a trilogy, man. It's not hard. It's not hard. And one of my favorite things is trilogies. I, I don't mind one-off movies, but I like trilogies. I like building this journey and going on it and then building up to an epic conclusion. And that's... That's the disappointing part about this movie. Is that I felt it. I'm looking at it. I'm like, I see the potential. I know what was supposed to happen. I'm seeing it with my own eyes that there are so many things, legwork, that should have been done in Last Jedi that wasn't done because Ryan wanted to go on his soapbox about the star, the Jedi being this and people, people need to let the past die. Because Ryan wanted to go on his preachy soapbox, that preachy soapbox to do something crazy and original that he never even took the time to build any blocks that would actually carry on into Last Jedi. And that's just disappointing. But all in all, I still enjoy the movie. I still like the character. I still like the like a lot of the characters. The I still like a lot of the characters. I still think it's a spectacular, the CGI is spectacular. I like the lightsaber battles. I like the score. There is a part at the end of this movie, near the end of this movie, that is instantly iconic to me, and I will remember it about this movie and about this trilogy overall. Um, I had fun. And if, a movie, and if all I can ask for is to have fun, then this movie's for you. I think it is a good movie. I don't think it's a great movie. I don't think it's as great as it should have been, which is highly disappointing. But I will give this movie a 7. I think it's a 7. I think it's a solid 7. It's entertaining. Great special effects. Great score. It's a fun time at the theaters, though a disappointing time at the theaters. It does not live up to what it should and where, where it should be. And that's just, you know, it's kind of like Deadpool 2. It's, Deadpool 2 is nowhere near as good as Deadpool 1, but at the same time, I still have fun watching it. I still had a good time watching it. It's still funny. It's still, it's still great in its own, it still has its great merits to it. It's just not as good as the first one. And that's how I feel about this. So I give Star Wars Rise of Skywalker a 7. Thank you guys for joining the Comic Game Movie Show. Please remember to like and subscribe. Tell me what is your thoughts on Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Thank you guys. Please remember to like and subscribe. Have a good one.